And I'm so honored to actually have my first ever guest in live transmission uh, from Venice, Ricardo Bizazza. Hi, Ricardo. Hi, how are you? Good. I'm good. How are you? Good, good, very good, very good. I'm so glad to do this because I admire what you do and to be in your beautiful Funache, the furnace <coughs> or the mosaic video or mosaic um, studio is actually really uh, something special. So I think what we will do is um, I will mute everyone if you don't mind. And then we, if you have any questions for our guest, please uh, put them in the chat and we will address them at the end of the talk, okay? For sure, we won't forget uh, anyone. Uh, in any case, Ricardo, tell us a little bit about this place. First of all, tell us about, about, about yourself. Uh, no, I prefer to talk about the place then. Okay. My, myself maybe will come, will come later. So okay. uh, welcome you everybody to, uh, I call it a special place. Uh, people probably, uh, the people that visit this place, they, they recognize that kind of the uh, uniqueness in the world because there are some <clears throat> uniqueness in this furnace. The first message is that you, we are today in the uh, last and only and last furnace that can have live uh, fire in Venice. We are not in Murano, but we are in Venice, Venice. Okay, so uh, this is one of the uh, uniqueness why we are uh, the only one and the last one, uh, because all the, uh, the fire was transferred in uh, Murano, on uh, 1291 by a doge, by a low, okay? And uh, then we could have the, the fire back in Venice after the Austrian emperor, so we're talking about 1700. So that's why Orsoni, that is 1888, is uh, here because we could have uh, a fire here in Venice. We are the only one because probably, uh, you know, the knowledge, the know-how, the ability, was more in uh, Murano, but we are the only one. And actually we don't do what Murano does. We don't blow uh, object, we don't make 3D things, but we make two kinds of uh, production. One is the Venetian smalty, so enamel glass, and one is uh, mosaic in 24 carats gold leaf. These are the two production that we do. So we treat more whatever is, uh, you know, cladding material for, uh, floor, walls, uh, any particular, uh, you know, project that requires uh, mosaic, we can uh, afford. And uh, everything starts from uh, in 1888, where the founder, Angelo Sony, uh, decided to build up this company. He was able to produce all these colors. Uh, and um, one year after 1889, he was invited by a friend, in Paris, 1889 was the, the expo in Paris, the one for the Tour Eiffel. If you remember, the Tour Eiffel was a, a temporary and then it became permanent. And so he, came, he went to Paris with uh, uh, his color chart that actually is this, you know, central panels you see here. So this is the original that was exposed in Paris in 1889. And from here, everything started. So start the curiosity from the uh, visitors. And uh, one of the visitor was the uh, people from Sagrada Familia. So Sagrada Familia got in touch with Orsoni since the beginning. In fact, the, the, since the beginning, Orsoni was delivering, and is still delivering material to Sagrada Familia. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, Anthony Gaudi was working a lot with the ceramics. And but he decided to use the uh, Venetian smalty enamels because it's uh, um, uh, how do you say it's more durable because what we produce is full body color glass. While ceramic is a glaze, mm -hmm. glaze can uh, chip off or have some other problems. This one is full body, body glass, and you will see later when we will go through and uh, you will see what, what we what we do. Okay. Uh, we are another reference, historical reference is San Marco Basilica. So we produce all the uh, San Marco gold for the restoration. San Marco gold is born made in Byzantine, actually, because the Venetian on the fourth crusade, they discovered the ability of doing glass in Byzantium. And they brought it here by, you know, buying uh, men, so knowledge. And that's why Venice started to uh, produce the glass. And uh, the San Marco Basilica, at least 50% is made in 
Byzantine. The remaining is made in Venice, even though there was certain centuries where the production was really bad. Now, Orsoni is the only, only firms that can make the uh, real San Marco gold. So that's why we are in touch with, with the people from San Marco. Orsoni, uh, because of the history, was really uh, always related to any religious project. So we go from, uh, you know, San Marco, Vatican, so old Christian Catholic, Christian Orthodox. As on today, we are uh, quite busy to serve the, uh, the biggest Orthodox cathedral in the world is in Budapest today, and we are continuously uh, um, delivering material to them. Uh, we were involved in uh, uh, Grand Mosque of Abu Dhabi for some decoration they use. We uh, clad the big sitting Buddha in Thailand, so you can understand that we, we embrace all the, all the religion around the world. Uh, the last big project that we did was in the uh, US, so the National Cathedral in Washington. Is, what did you do there? Uh, all the domes, all the gold, all the saints, or whatever you see mosaic is done here. Was done here. Okay, so it took a couple of years to produce all the material. They, I think they finished three years back, with kind of uh, inauguration or two or three, three years back. Was. And uh, so a religious project is still something uh, interesting for Osoni, but Osoni want to uh, evolve. So we would like to say that there is still the possibility to grow in the tradition. There is always a possibility to grow in the tradition, but we need to evolve in innovation. So what we did five years back when I started uh, here was to um, collaborate with some architects to start doing a, a, a very, uh, how do you say, um, uh, a decoration, a restoration of the place. We, we didn't want to, uh, you know, to, to change whatever was the, uh, you know, the characteristic of Orsoni. Uh, so we start connecting with some, uh, you know, partner, technical partner to make this uh, furnace even uh, better if possible. And to give a, a, a message to any, you know, visitors where they can realize that history is part of the furnace, but we need to move forward, especially, you know, in 2020 or 2018, what was, that we cannot stay uh, you we cannot just stand with uh, the tradition with the tradition or with only the religion so we need to move forward that's why we did uh we are engaged of uh, we were engaged of doing the the house of uh, jeff coombs in uh, new york mm -hmm. uh, his private home it's private home in, okay. in Manhattan. and uh, then we finished a couple of years back the uh, uh, movie academy uh, LA, the one where Renzo Piano was building the, you know, the, the spare. And um, so we are related to that kind of client that uh, are looking for uh, uh, uniqueness, handmade, handicraft. And if they like mosaic and they like glass, they probably have a chance to come here and, or to email us to get some interest in that. So this is what we are keep on going, keep on doing. Ricardo, how do people find your story? Like let's say the you know the um, the the church in Washington D.C. When uh, when they start the search, are you the first on the list? Uh, we go still by word of mouth. Okay. Uh, so because of the history, because of the quality, uniqueness, especially in the religion, they go word of mouth. Okay. Yes. Uh, then how we get to the private, let's say, rich people that wants to buy some uniqueness. Uh, again, they go by word of mouth because we guess <clears throat> a lot of a lot. We guess the right people here. You know, we are lucky to be in Venice, uh, so we are connected to the Biennale, Biennale of Art, Biennale of Architecture. We participate to the Biennale every year. One one year we participate in the Biennale Giardini, and all the years we are doing something connected to. At the Biennale. So it could be a conference, could be a, um, uh, you know, events, something like that. But we are always connected with Biennale. This year we'll be connected with the Biennale Venice Pavilion. We will host, we will guest 
uh, architect de Lucchi in uh, conference here. Uh, next year, we will be involved in Biennale of Art uh, together with, uh, uh, um, I would say, um, Holland, so Dutch mm -hmm. uh, botanic, very famous botanic yeah. uh, guy. Uh, we will uh, manage to make an installation in the, in the garden. Uh, there is going to be involved a Korean uh, artist that does uh, colorful stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we keep on going to uh, participate with that. We did um, a conference related to colors because we are very, very keen on getting colors. We produce more than 3,500 colors, you will see later on. So for us, color is the central point of the discussion. Then for sure is glass, for sure is mosaic. Uh, so when we talk about colors, we want to talk about with professional that knows about colors, could be a color designer, could be a color professor. Uh, we did um, was a conference about colors and art, colors and architecture, uh, colors and design. Uh, we managed to organize a Biennale of Colors here in, uh, in Orsoni last year. Uh, so we are very, very active also in, uh, you know, doing these kind, of, these kind of things. But everything starts from this center. Panel. How many colors are here? In this panel is roughly 1,000 colors. And the left and the right are not the um, copy, but these are the extension of the, of the colors. So you can imagine. Wow. Uh, and this is done by the original because this is 1888. The left and the right is 1905. Okay. So the founder, Angelo Sony, was able to do already these colors. And we are still doing the same production, keeping the same tradition as the Byzantine brought in Venice. Yeah. I mean, a thousand and thousand back. When you would do, like, let's say, in San Marco, when it's a restoration project, how how much in advance do they have to order material from you and like, test it? In? But mainly they realize that they need to have some stock. Yes. Okay. So they manage with some stock, and then if they have some, you know, if they if they the level is going down, they always ask us by in time uh, for you to produce. Yeah. Produce. And you're the only one that can actually match the San Marco gold, correct? You're the only one that can produce the San Marco. Because wow. has a different technique out of all the other goals that uh, are also produce. It's is a special, it, special. Is it 24 carat gold? Is it pure 24 carats? Uh, the difference is that to make a San Marco gold, we need to make a, a glass that is more antique, and even the gold beater that is another, uh, you know, uh, tech, another artisan beats for more than six hours instead of three hours. Wow! That, that beat wow. for the for the standard gold. Yeah. So it's a, it's a long process to make as antique as possible because we don't want, nobody wants to make a restoration super visible. So they, they you need to you know, fit perfectly, yeah. match it perfectly. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's start. It's almost sunset actually here in Venice, but um, mm -hmm. we will be going. We have a wonderful, beautiful lady actually helping us here. She's our, our director for tonight. So we will be moving around. Uh, if you get any questions as you go on, please uh, put them in the chat and we will get to everything, okay? Regional malls from Sagarotnia. This is a typical uh, production of the skin tone mosaic from, from the song. We are very, very famous to produce the skin tone for all the portraits related to the religious. Uh, this is the Samar quote. Then we will see how we cut mosaic on that. But this is very, very specific. Specific for the restoration of uh, San Marco. Okay, this door is the, the, the entrance of the furnace where all the people ring uh, the bell and they enter They enter from here and they enter in a place uh, full of colors. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you now. Now, this part is related to the history of the, uh, uh, the furnace and the production. So you see here the uh, scratch material, so wastage material. If you pay attention, if you can understand that is we work with colors and the color is always inside in the body. Okay, so we don't play with transparent glass and we uh, add colors, but we color inside. So it's full of colors. So all this material, is the uses for remelting. So as you know, the glass can be remelted. 
So whenever we do the, you know, some colors, we can reuse easily this kind of material to create the new colors. On my right here, these are the uh, pots. The name is Crojoli. This is where we melt the glass and we color the glass. Because originally it does not have this color, originally it has, <coughs> it is made in clay, special, special clay for high temperature. So it's this kind of brown colors, but because of every day melting, melting the colors, this is what has come out after some months of production. So we need to change every couple of months. Whatever is is not break, doesn't, doesn't break, we keep it here and we make all around uh, uh, the Crojoli as a kind of you know, piece of art of unique, unique place. Now just follow me, we go into the uh, furnace. Okay, now you are in the furnace. Uh, actually, this is the furnace. Inside there are uh, always three pots. Today we are producing, during these days, we are producing a special gold. To produce a gold like this is a gold plate. To produce this gold plate, there are some process. The first process is to create this square, thin, clear glass to protect the gold leaf. So to do this, we blow. And this is what our fire maker, Matteo, she's doing uh, today. She's blowing bubbles then to create the square piece. Okay, we blow uh, bubbles not because we, we sell objects, but we blow bubbles just to make one face of the uh, gold plate. So after we blow the bubbles, we need to cut in this box square piece. Okay, from here, we will apply the gold leaf. In this case, it's a white gold. Okay, the room where we apply them, we cut them aside, is in this in this way. Okay, from here to here, there is a process of pasting the pasting the, the, the gold. We produce these plates, and we apply the gold leaf by vapor only, so we don't use any glue. To do that, and this is what we learn from uh, uh, from the Byzantine technique of producing the gold side. Okay, so when we have when we have this, we need to um, to make the 
extra glass. So to turn in this, so we need to apply, we go back to the furnace, we apply, we pour over the blue base glass, we press and technically this is a sandwich because we need to protect the gold. So in this case, the gold is protected by a thin layer of glass. Okay, from here, we need to carry mosaic. And this is what Antonella is doing. As you can tell, there's really no room for mistake here. The precision has to be really incredible. Nathanella does it in such a perfect way. Look, they're all the same exact size as well. You know, the quanto tempo che lavori qua? 40 anni. She's been doing it 40 years. I don't know how she does that because she looks like she's about 35, but she's been working here for 40 years doing exactly this work. Can you hear me? Okay, I'll, I'll go through. Okay, so now we will move to another part of the furnace where we cut, the, uh, we, we chop the mosaic. So a part of producing gold, and here you can see how many shades of gold or Sony does. So all these are gold leaf. This panel is more on the different carrots. So we go from a few carrots to 20, from three carrots to 24 carats, whatever we turn down in uh, Ramino colors or all this Venetian uh, gold is color because we blow the bubbles in colors, as you can see here. If you see these small bubbles, they are colors because then we paste the gold leaf, the yellow gold leaf, so it turns in green, uh, you know, red, violet, orange, different colors. Okay. <clears throat> now we are moving in the um, cutting lab where we cut all the enamel glass. So we produce slabs of enamel colors. And then from, from, the, from the slabs, we chop in mosaic. And these machines, uh, Ricardo, how, how old is this tool itself? I think this machine was invented by uh, Angelo Sony, or better, Angelo Sony was involved in the uh, special. Um, uh, the, the, cutting the, cut, the cutting the cutting diamond yes he was studying the cutting diamond because originally this machine were used to uh, chopping the uh, marble and stone so angelo was kind of an inventor as well uh, he only was a visionary in so many ways he was an inventor of, of the machine he was he, he was even changing the machines according to the new, uh, you know, energy, because initially we were going by uh, wood, then we move on carbon, then we move on uh, oil, and today we are going on uh, on gas, gas or electricity, we, we're producing gas. Okay, so every day the ladies uh, are cutting the mosaic in the size is one by two CM, as you can see in these panels here. 
how many, how many uh, in this particular department? Uh, there are eight here. Well, all in all, we are on 22. 22. And this room also talk about uh, colors or better, the importance of colors in the specific place where you work. So the orange remind to the uh, creativity. Uh -huh. uh, the green is to the attention. And the violet here is to the, uh, you know, relax, more quiet and relaxing place. So this is something that we, we changed during the restoration. Together with a color designer, we start studying more in the, you know, the design or the meaning of the colors, uh, even in a, in a working in a working place. Yeah. Okay. You know, even Renaissance, they did that. Renaissance spaces, like some, you know, some Marco Library, they yeah. would color the walls green for reading to help the eyes relax. So it really all started back centuries ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is an extra room that we uh, create last September. This is more, uh, we need to create a space for the uh, architect room, uh, project room. So the clients come here. So we, uh, we, we discuss about the project they have. We can go to take them, you know, samples, colors, and uh, it turns in a kind of, you know, uh, experimental uh, room where you see project done with the uh, Academy of Art of uh, uh, Venice, the, this panels here that have a, a special story about that. Then you have uh, these panels here. This panels here is done by a young designer uh, just to show how you can play uh, three-dimensional, staying in B-dimensional, just to play with shades, okay? <clears throat> I think when I was here in July, you had Dolce & Gabbana project here on the table. We have, tell us, <clears throat> tell us about that. We have Dolce & Gabbana project. They want to uh, use their foulard uh, design to transform in mosaic. So they give us the design and we start working in the, with the mosaic. And this was uh, shown when it was 10 days ago. We are gonna be, we can allow to communicate only from today, <laughs> even though it was passing already 10 to 15 days. Okay, but it was a nice, a nice uh, job together with Dolce Gabbana. This did is- you meet, Did you meet Jennifer Lopez? I, I, wasn't, I was at one meter far from Jennifer Lopez. Logically it was untouchable, but you know, it was nice to see Jennifer Lopez. And I, I saw Jennifer Lopez in the uh, movie, Sorry, how do you the say Biennale. the Biennale of uh, Cinema? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because we was together with Ben Affleck, and uh, we were being invited by Cartier uh, that was sponsoring. Cartier was here for visiting, so we guessed a lot of visitors, uh, special visitors that are they wants to see something uh, you know related to the unique. artisan, unique and related to artisan because artisan is keep on uh, picking. And uh, so fashion brands or, or luxury brands or brands related with colors. This is Missoni, this is Missoni, you know, rug, yes. And from here, actually was, we were in, uh, in Milano Fashion Week, Fashion Week, Milano Design Week. We did a big vase. So this is the vase that we did in, uh, in Milano, and then this phase we come back here and we stay in the garden here. So this oh, is the phase that we did. I, I okay. Yeah, yeah. So everything starts from this, and then can we do something in mosaic? What can we do? We do three dimensional. We would like to do a vase. So we uh, we we work with the uh, with the support for the vase, and then we clad with uh, with mosaic. It's incredible how <clears> the <throat> media is interchangeable. <laughs> You know, you can go from a rug to a beautiful object for the whole. Ah, yes, ah, yes. The mosaic is very flexible. It can cover any, you know, any surface. It's and so durable, right? I it's mean, so durable. Like it. And then more color you have, more emotion you can create. Yeah. Those two, for example, these are um, a gift for the homage to the Twin Towers. Oh. Was it done, was, it ago, was done more than 10 years back. Okay. It's all in gold. Uh, apart from the black, and um, the size is very, very small. 
Then, uh, Laura, on your back, there is the, um, how do you call it? Uh, un quadro, eh? Un... Painting. Yeah, art painting. This was uh, in uh, exposed in uh, Biennale of the 1962. This was done by Lucio Orsoni, an artist. So as you see, this room is really a uh, you can the testing rooms. We like to work with the uh, decoration on the floor. So as you can see, the floor is mainly wood plus uh, you know decoration of uh, smalti, so very, very easy, but uh, the people that are coming here, they, they like very much, you know, a little bit of accent in the, in the, in the wood floor. Okay, so let's, let's move, let's go on. Let me turn on a little bit of light, otherwise you... <clears throat> All this part was created later on, it was a little bit of messy place, so we clean every, everything. We make this uh, door, this door, the door, the, sorry, the floor. Uh, the floor is again uh, an homage to um, Antonio Gaudi. Technique is the trencadis. So it's a technique that Antonio Gaudi was relaunching in, the, in his architectural uh, things. So it's again, more triangular, chopping triangular pieces, so big pieces. <clears throat> And not only consider mosaic as a you know mosaic, so we produce bigger slabs. So from that we can we can play whatever we want. So would it be called mosaic or no? No, not anymore. This is a palladiana. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm. <clears throat> You were talking before about the machines yeah. uh, invented by Angelo Sony. Actually, this is a machine for pressing the slabs. So, okay. So you color, you melt the colors, you pour the colors, and then you go like and you flat. Wow! Wow! No, technology is the same, machine is slightly different, but the concept is the same. This is the cutting machine, the chopping machine. And this is the gold, the gold machine. Again, the thin glass, the gold leaf stay here. We pour the blue glass and then we go like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we produce gold plates and then we cut in mosaic. Wow. Okay. So how long did the process all together to create a mosaic test that is from the beginning to the end? How many hands have to touch it? Uh, uh, the one, two, three, four, five. So five people. Five different people <clears throat> to create the gold mosaic. Sure. Someone so asked why the blue. Someone, someone asked what? Why the blue behind the gold? Uh, the blue base gold, the blue backing gold is important <clears throat> because give the, the color of the, um, the gold is more warm. So more noble to say. If you remember, we need to, to deal with the uh, um, religious and they don't like to have a, you know, super shining gold. So they like to have a more, uh, you know, um, how do you say? Uh, we call it warm, warm color of gold. Otherwise, it's going to be too shiny. This is why we go for, for the blue back. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. <clears throat> Another important room is where we uh, store. You can come here, Laura. Where we store uh, all the, um, you know, the color plates. We need to have a place where to keep it. And this is the place where uh, all the colors have uh, stopped, actually. So I would like to welcome you to the uh, color library.
so this place I think is uh, one of the unique place uh, for sure in Venice, maybe in the world, because we are uh, stocking here more than 3,500 colors. The name of the, this place is Color Library, was given by a painter, Virgilio Guidi. We were on the 70s. When he came here, he was uh, just saying this cannot be a, a, a deposit or warehouse. This is a color library. So we like so much the name. So we kept this name. And today, the color library is uh, recognized here in Venice as a part of uh, Orsoni uh, uniqueness. Now, the color library has two different uh, parts. One is this big <clears throat> area here. As you see, the number in the shelf is not related to the colors, but it is related to the shelf. Uh, in fact, if you see, there are a mix of colors in, in, in any shelf, okay? And we call it this out of the uh, color chart because what Orsoni does is a, uh, you know, a color chart that we give to the um, architect, designer, interior decorators. This is the, we say the standard color chart has 250 colors, but here there are more than 3,500 colors. So all the library has 3,500? Yeah, my inventory is more than 3,500. 3,005. So what's happened? An architect or a decorator designer come here and say, okay, I, uh, I like these shades of color, but you have something in between. So we go first to the out of color chart to find possible. Otherwise, we can produce the color he or she wants. Now, the real uh, library by shades is not here, but start from this part. So from the skin tone library. Tu puoi Laura arrivare fino a qua, se perché dopo perdi la connessione. Okay, as you can see from here, you see all the shades. You have the skin tone, you have the, the green, the blue. Then on the left, you have the yellow, the orange, the violet. It's, it's a special place, yes. It's a magical place. So we work here again, actually, Previously, it was not even possible to visit this place because it was full of, you know, crates, chaos, or whatever it is. So we clean it up. We make this place better for working first because we have, I'm very, very keen on people working in a, in a good place to make some good results. Then it comes that, you know, with this area, we can open more for a, a conference during the night, an open space. So we that's where we guessed when I was telling you we, that we organized conference, conference, Biennale, yeah. Biennale of Colors. So we did everything from here to the garden outside. So this is a place that we, we use for the production during the day and from some events during the evening and night. Come siamo di tempo? Siamo alle 7.42. Ok. So, an additional room that we work on was uh, a space that was dedicated to as a warehouse for the gold plates. So, all these gold plates were stocked in this room here. So, we didn't change the identity of the gold, the, the space, and we changed uh, the, the meaning of this room. So we also need a room to guest the people when they, uh, you know, we were doing some conference, special events. So we need to have some uh, place where the people can refresh. So we built up a, you know, a bathroom. The name is the golden bathroom, logically, because you see, you see how we can use the shades. Unbelievable. Okay. And uh, the real, yeah, it, it continues. It goes, it goes here. You really opened all the doors to us. 
yeah, it has become a place where the, when you open doors, the people get something to, to see at least. So, and this is more or less what we uh, work on it. Then there's going to be, you know, the future because we 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 managed to make, uh, you know, uh, uh, we clean it up very very hard. Uh, we open the new uh, rooms. We put some, uh, you know, um, some room where dedicated to some work. So we reput again the work where the room was originally. Uh, so we uh, put everything uh, in certain order for the production area because we are keen on continuous, uh, you know, very, very, um, I just say, uh, important for us is to keep on the production for sure. Then we turn in a different, uh, you know, uh, application for architects. So you see the floor of the Arcafe, you see the room for the architect. What is going to be next year? We are working on the, a new area. We are going to restore a new area to create the cultural, educational, uh, you know, department. We call it uh, La Scola, so the School of Art. So what we will do there, we organize we teach the people here, we train the people here because we are on moving uh, the people. So we, we, are, we are hiring other people for sure. Uh, some people got on retired. So for sure we need to train, train and change. Uh, we organize uh, courses, mosaic courses of you know three days or one week with Antonella. Antonella is our mosaicist. Now you saw Antonella going around because she's more than you know 30 plus here. So she, she know how to do everything, but she is mainly a mosaicist, an artist mosaicist. And uh, we, so we will do mosaic courses and we will do uh, artist residency mm -hmm. and uh, a special workshop for special clients. Wow. So this is what we are going to do. And with this, we complete, I complete my special mission. Yes. <laughs> mission here. Incredible. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoy. And there is any, if there is any question, any, anything that you want to know more, I know that it was very kind of fast. It was all lovely. So if you have a chance to come to Venice, so please come and visit and visit us. We, you will be welcome. I'll be, I'll be here to bring you around. So you, you can see, especially in the morning, because we produce in the morning. So if you have a chance to, to be here in the morning, you will see. How can people book the tour? Now there is, we, yeah, one important thing is that Orsoni decided to do when I was here the first day is to open to the, I call it citizens, whoever pass entering Venice, either from the, you know, train station or from the bridge, Calatrava bridge, for me, they are becoming Venetian. So the first and the last Wednesday of every month, there is a free visit for tourists. Uh, they, you have just to go to the website, okay. going to the visit, they open the agenda, you you book the agenda, you and you come here free. Okay, okay. You know what? Um, let's go back um, okay. to the main computer and we will see the questions because I think there's some questions coming in. Okay. Thank <clears throat> you every day. Work yeah. every day, yeah. Saturday, Sundays, or but this Sunday I will be here because I have some guests. Saturday and Sunday is more for visit for special person that ask for a visit. Usually we work Monday to Friday, then Saturday and Sunday. But the flame, the fire is is on, always. Yeah, there is always the fire. Okay. Ricardo, thank you so much. This was an incredible behind the scenes uh, tour and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being patient as we were moving on from room to room. I think one question I would love to ask you before we look at the questions of the audience mm -hmm. is um, what do you think will be the future of Venice? I mean, you said earlier how everyone who comes from Terraferma and they come to Venice, all the visitors become Venetians. Is that something citizens, that Venetians, yes. the citizens of Venice, which you know goes back to Renaissance when Venetians really welcomed every possible ethnic group, you know, religious groups. You're very close to the Jewish ghetto. Are you part of the 
ghetto no it's a little bit out right we are just a few meters far yeah. but you know ghetto is just a small island with that story so yeah nobody can produce in ghetto yet. yeah we say that we are close to ghetto just to make the people understand very fast where we are and especially that we are not in Murano, but we are in Venice. Yes, yeah. okay. incredible. So regarding your question, I I uh, I can tell you that there are uh, entrepreneurs, so businessmen that are, entrepreneurs, yeah, okay. entrepreneurs that are investing money in Venice to prove that the quality of life in Venice should be the quality of life for the future. So logically, we are lucky because we don't have machines, we don't have traffic. But if you think that anybody can walk on the street, you could be, I don't know, uh, the billionaire in the world, but you can even be the, the guy that works on the restaurant and you are walking on the same street. So this makes, uh, you know, more democratic uh, city. One of the most democratic city probably in the world is Venice because of, because of this. So a lot of foreigners come here, invest money because they uh, love Venice. And this is what, uh, you know, make us very happy. So we would like to keep on going with these kind of things. And uh, uh, I think that uh, Venice uh, has not the fast, it's not the fastest changing system or city, but uh, COVID brings us to change in any case. So it, there's going to be a, a change. Uh, we are more worried about the high tide for sure. That's going to be aqua alta, you aqua mean? alta water uh -huh. tide. Yes. And uh, we are keeping some precaution, but we need to keep it seriously because we want to save this city that is still considered uh, the city of art. And so welcome to any, anybody that wants to help Venice just by buying, uh, you know, palazzi or buying houses because they love Venice. So for sure, they will do something good for, for Venice itself. Do you think initiatives like Dolce & Gabbana, for example, recently, are they, this is what we need to bring attention of the world to Venice? Is that the, is that the answer? Uh, Do, Dolce & Gabbana, Yves Saint Laurent, uh, Dior. So all these people are in some way using Venice for sure, yeah. because they need to, you know, to make their business. Yeah. But if, if that brings a uh, job for the people first, and if they make this for the benefit of the artisan, yeah. and to make more business before they have more uh, you know, visibility, this for me is good. For sure, they, when they come here, they pay respect to the city, and they, yeah. they, they don't just you know, throw money for nothing. So they pay, every, everybody pay respect to the city of Venice because as such a history and the culture that it should be respected. And saved. Um, so the question came, are the tubs in which you melt the glass reusable or thrown away when you change colors? The, tub the, the tubs, you know, the, the big... Uh, in the no, courtyard. no, the tubs cannot be reused. That's the end of the production. So we cannot reuse that. Otherwise, we will, uh, the colors will affect too much the colors that we have to produce. So whatever you saw outside is for... Uh, there for, for let's say exhibition or for the garden or for the, but there is no other use okay so they're just there as a kind of momentum of what yeah. you went through okay um on the gold test today why is the base blue the base is blue because the, the blue backing uh give to the gold a more warm uh, effect we call it noble effect uh the people that all the people appreciate the gold but there are main, main of the people, they don't like to, to see too much shining gold, but really uh, elegant. We make more elegant gold. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's the only reason. Aesthetic. That's the, yes, that's, that's aesthetic. Because if you do on crystal, you will have the gold that is too prominent, too yeah. much. Yeah. So it could be nice for Russian people, yeah. maybe. It could be nice for other people. But our market is more dedicated to the people that want to have more elegant uh, you know, effect of gold. Um, the question, why do your pigments, uh, where do your pigments come from? Are they all from Italy? Uh, mainly they are uh, pigments or minerals, they are international. Uh, because we are in Venice, we are from uh, Europe. Uh, one of the most important, uh, you know, minerals is the sand. So the sand should be very, very 
pure, so silica sand from Fontainebleau, uh, France, mm -hmm. is the typical sand that all the people that do glass and crystal glass use mainly, for sure. Uh, thank you for this great presentation and congratulations on the Orsoni's workshop in Color Library. Thank you. I think this comment is from Los Angeles, I believe. Uh, let's see. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I get a lot of things coming in. Um, can we have the exact web address? So when I send the recording, I will definitely include all the links that you anyway, want. Or Orsoni.com is the website. And uh, Orsoni Venezia 1888 is on Instagram and Facebook. And the question coming actually from the UNESCO expert. Uh, yeah. Thank you for an extraordinary insight into this process. As someone who works in architecture restoration, how are the tessere adhered in the restoration of the mosaics of San Marco? What do you mean? How the, come si attaccano, no? Come sono? Ah, with... Uh... Uh, from history, from the Byzantine, they were mainly uh, pure cement. Then uh, today we have a uh, you know special glue, either cement glue or oxy glue. In any case, glue, mainly cement, uh, cement glue. Okay. And are the, the pieces pushed together and then brought in as already part of a? No, no, one by one. One by one. one by okay. One. And this I have them here in my hand. Here they are. They're, they're, they're just, I found them on the floor. Uh -huh. um, I stole some as we went on the tour. Now, this is for the restoration. Now, what we do, we make it simple since the past, okay? So, we glue any tiles in a piece of paper, okay. paper for mosaics. So, this is more faster for the application. Otherwise, for sure, it takes forever. You know, years, forever. Like, isn't it? They were taking forever, okay? Now, for me, if you say, I need to go, I, I want to do a special bath, I want to do a swimming pool. So, we give delivery of you know, uh, six to eight weeks from production to creating the sheets. And then there is an installation that is extra, you know, four to four to five weeks for the installation. Question from an artist coming from London. Amazing to see behind the scenes. Thank you. Where are you involved in the design of Rudolf Noreo's yes. grave? Yes, in Paris. Actually, this there was a nice, a nice project. Fantastic uh, result, piece of art, even though it's tomb, okay, but it's really a piece of art because it's all three dimensional. Uh, fabulous, thank you very much. Interesting, you use blue in the background. In traditional water gilding, we use red bole to give the gold a richer tone. And I think you're probably referring to fresco making, right? Yeah. Or, you know, the any, any painting on panel. Even though Angelo soon was experimenting even different backing uh, colors. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It was really visionary. He really truly was. And you're now continuing in his footsteps. No, I'm coming from research and development, yes. But, you know, I prefer more to... Uh, whatever appreciate what he was doing because he has invented everything okay we don't want to go on uh, too much on, on technology or technology or even pure innovation but we want to avoid for sure so uh, just to let you understand that probably in the future you, we will lose a little bit of brightness on the color especially in the red and the orange and the yellow so the colors then the tendency of the colors will be more pastel so we will lose uh, a little bit, but this is what uh, you know, the new, I would say, raw material can give us. So, because they are cutting, cutting, cutting some, uh, uh, you know, uh, minerals. So, it's impossible to even find them. It's difficult. And uh, if now technology is not really involved in that, uh, I don't know in which way, because we are not so mean to produce this, we are going to get a little bit of problem. In, uh, in the richness of the uh, colors. You know, I have to say, I, I was so impressed when I visited in July because when we went to the color library, and one of the comments was, to be in your color library would be, uh, uh, would be in heaven for an architect. Mm -hmm. It is so true, it's such a special place. But what you did, you have this kind of multimedia project in there. And if you stand in a specific spot- Yeah, we did a project, about... we did a project together with the university. We are very connected with the uh, university. Being a small artisan, I think that university could be our research and, uh, like a and, de and development department. Oh, yeah. okay. uh, so the project was financed by European funds. 
cultural company innovation. These were the, the, you know, the three chapters. So what we did, uh, usually we were uh, uh, tell a story about some colors. One were the skin tone, one were the orange, the red, one were the blue. So the installation was to, uh, was to invite the poetess uh, to tell our story. She was from the point. And then we give a, they, she, they give a, a voice and the sound. So it's very, very interesting because it's a very vertical sound for one person. And uh, you, if, if you go into the website and you go under the library, you, you can listen to the three stories about the skin tone, about the imperial colors, so the red and the orange. So you will listen to the story in, uh, in English. And this is what we project here in, uh, in the library. So the library actually has become kind of uh, the place of sense senses. There is also a fragrance inside that was done by a, a French nose. Mm -hmm. He was one of the guests here for, as a visitor. He came here, he liked so much, and said, I want to, to give you, I want to do a fragrance here. And uh, so I say, Bertrand, the name is Bertrand Ducafu. I say, Bertrand, I'm not ready to sell fragrance as a song. I mean, I'm not a fashion. Uh, and he said, I don't care, I give you the fragrance. So she, he gave me the, you know, the components to make, give me the, the pyramids. Yeah. So I started studying a bit of uh, you know, fragrance. So it came out of fragrance, so we did it. And in the library, you can have you know, all the sense, all the stimulation of the senses. Wow. A part of the tasting. And can, can people actually order that special, uh, is it an ambience, not perfume or what? It is an ambience, yes. Okay, but it's not for sale. No. Okay, it's just <laughs> here. You have to come and experience this live. You have to come and experience uniqueness here, yes. Yeah. Ricardo, I'm so grateful. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you for your time. I think everyone here can't wait to get some Venice and come to you know Mapporetto and come here uh, to visit. But I think if you wanted to um, see the catalog, digital catalog, uh, for you so go on project, the, the website and you can uh, you will just you know, give just the name and the email and then you can download. So in the catalog you will see how many projects. Our special project we did, yes. And some really special um, photography. I mean, the photographs yeah. are stunning uh, in the catalog. So you can, you know, keep this uh, fun going. Um, so thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you. Thank and you uh, we're waiting for you here in Venice. And as, you, as Ricardo said, first and last Wednesday, Wednesday of every month. month, yes. The visits are uh, available here. Anyway, thanks everyone. See you next week with Bella Figura. Thank you. Thank you. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Ciao. Ciao. Arrivederci, grazie. Grazie. Arrivederci, grazie. Oh, grazie mille. It's like all like a big family, actually. Big living room. Roma. <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Grazie mille, ciao. Grazie mille, ciao. Ciao. Grazie. Grazie a voi. Grazie.